Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be making two cards using this die set called Adoring Florets and it's a card builder die set from Amazing Paper Grease at Spellbinders. And I'll start off by using the one of the outer or outline edge dies of this um beautiful ornate piece here, but I'm actually just going to use it as a border die or a frame die. And what I, I did was I did a partial, um, actually a full die cut, and then I'm lining this back up so that the pattern locks in place with the previous die cut, and then I'll do a partial die cut from that end. And that gets me this full um, sort of beautiful border. So it's really nice that they've uh, separated out this um, outline die here and that you can use it separately from the decorative panel, which I'm actually not going to use at all on this card. I'm actually going to use the um, sentiment um, panel, which comes in three different dies. So you get similar to the other pattern, you have your outline die, which is separate. And I've die cut that once out of solid black cardstock. And here I've just taped together the outline die with the decorative die. The decorative die just cuts into your cardstock, that really beautiful ornate pattern, but it leaves that pattern in your cardstock. So if you want to actually die cut it out, you need to combine it with the outline die as I've done here. And I um, die cut this layer out of a pearlescent um, snow white cardstock. I think this is Centura Pearl. And I um, am using my um, magic mat and I think I left off the cardstock shim that I normally use um, in my sandwich and that's why I didn't get a complete um, die cut but usually I don't really have a problem with any of these dies they they all cut beautifully and then the third part of this um, sentiment banner or badge is the sentiment itself and there's just the one die and it cuts out um, the entire, both words. And it's all a single die cut, which is really nice. So all of the letters are connected. So you don't have to worry about um, spacing them or, or putting it back together. So I thought that I was done, but then I decided that I think I want to add an additional matte layer. Um, and in fact, I decided to add two more mats, so this is going to be a very layered card front. So I'm first going to add a white layer onto um, this pink, but before gluing it down, I'll actually dry emboss it just to give it some extra texture. And then I decided that the white border that's all the way around just seemed like it was too wide of a border. So I cut an extra piece of darker purple. And um, Pantone released its color of the year, uh, Very Perry, which is sort of a blue-violet. Um, and I thought originally when I started picking my colors for this card that I would try to uh, give a nod to <laughs> the Very Perry color, but all of my purple cardstock is a little bit more on the reddish um, side of the spectrum as opposed to the more blue violet that I think very Perry is supposed to be. So I didn't quite hit the mark with um, the Pantone color of the year, but it's it's um, purple all the same. So I, I like the purple, black, and silver um, combination. So I've um, I used that on this card. And if you uh, saw earlier, I also uh, made a card using another die set within the uh, Classically Becca collection, which was the With Love Regalia card builder set. And so really loving this combination. If you haven't already checked out that video, I'll leave a link to it in the upper right hand corner here if you want to uh, check that out because I actually use that die set in a very uh, different way. Then um, all I'm going to do now, though, is just continue to um, add these mats and layers. And I used my daddy tape runner on the intricate uh, design layer. And it's 
the Dottie tape runner is really nice because it's nice and fast and it um, because the adhesive just has little dots of adhesive it um, will just cling to wherever there's paper but you still sometimes do get some adhesive hanging off of the sides and so that's why I'm always taking my gum eraser to um, these panels to just clean up some of that adhesive that um, might not have um, come off. So the last step here will be to just add a little bit of foam. This is my low profile foam. It's only one millimeter high, which I really like for um, adding dimension without adding too much thickness. That way this is still a very easy mailer. I don't think there's going to be any risk of um, needing extra postage to put this in the mail and um, as well it still adds a little bit of that dimension and lift from the rest of the card so I think it's equally effective um, but is just easier to pop in the mail. So that's my first card complete. Now on to my second card, which will be a shaker card. Uh, again, I'm making a USA 2 size card. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. This panel, the white panel I have here, is actually measured at four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm trying my best just to line up the decorative panel in the center where there's equal spacing um, between the left and right side and the bottom. And here you can see what I mean by uh, how it die cuts out the design, but it leaves that design in your panel as opposed to cutting it out as a separate piece. If you wanted that cut out completely separately, then you would just add the two outline dies and you would get a um, completely cut out uh, layer, which I actually have off to the right. You can sort of see it partially on camera there. That's the piece that you'll have if you combine all three dies um, that are in this shape. The outline die that gives you the two or uh, the three straight edges, the separate outline die that gives you the curved edge, and then the decorative die. Because I'll be making a shaker card, I'm going to go ahead and put some acetate behind this um, lacy pattern here. And I'm just going to use some double sided dry adhesive tape to get this stuck down. And the acetate that I use for my shakers, they are, um, it's a pretty thin acetate. It's not, it's not your heavy duty stuff. Um, and I did run a little bit of daddy tape runner through that lacy pattern just to make sure that um, that part doesn't lift up from the card, but I wasn't too careful or concerned about getting 100% coverage there. I just wanna make sure that it's, it's tacked down. And I um, trimmed off the rest of the acetate panel there just to uh, make sure that everything fits nicely. And the way that I like to make my shaker cards is I do like to seal it off with um, a second layer of acetate. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and um, glue on this additional layer. So this is a second layer of that exact same pattern. Only this time I did use the two outline dies to give me a full die cut. And I'm gonna stack that right on top. So that this is a way that you can make a shaker and still have all of that um, beautiful pattern, but because the borders are so thin on the die cut itself, it would be hard to um, put foam behind there to get to give you enough thickness for your shaker bits. And so that's why I, the first time when I die cut it, I die cut it out of a larger panel so that I can have those wider borders, and um, that way I can have some uh, stick some foam. Uh, all the way around to contain the shaker bits. And this is how I like to buy my foam. I buy them in sheets that already have adhesive on one side. And then when I actually go to use it on a project, I'll just pick the width of um, double-sided adhesive strip that I need and lay down those strips so that I have a guide for trimming down into the exact width 
of uh, foam strips that I need. That way I don't have to buy uh, foam that is already cut down into uh, predetermined widths and it's actually more cost effective to buy it this way too um, as the full sheet. And then you have a lot of different options. You can die cut from them, you can um, hand cut like I'm doing here. Um, and I use every, every little bit. So, um, nothing goes to waste. And sometimes with some of these pieces, I am not even going to bother to put another layer of adhesive on it because there's enough foam that has adhesive on both, uh, top and bottom to secure this down to the second piece of acetate that I'm going to put down. The rest of the foam that I just used to fill in, that's just so that I have, I don't have any portion of the card that might cave in and um, everything is nice and level and um, and it doesn't feel like there's a part that's going to sag in or, or um, feel a little bit more squishy than the rest. So I'm creating a shaker mix that is a combination of the Fun Stamper's Journey confetti and I've got some sequins in here of various sizes too. I like um, I like this combination because it's got a little bit of an Aurora Borealis uh, shimmer to it and I'll be using some iridescent mirror cards so I think it's going to go really nicely with that. And plus if you kind of um, tilt it at certain angles you get sort of a pinkish purplish um, tint to some of the bits in here which I think will go nicely with the purple um, card stock that I'm using too. I have this leftover <laughs> scrap of purple that I um, I'm going to use behind here. I thought that I might use a little bit of that mirror cardstock behind there too, but I already have a lot of shimmer and that sort of rainbow effect from the Aurora Borealis um, sequin mix. So I think putting your iridescent mirror card behind there is going to be a little overkill. So I decided to use this. It's just a plain purple cardstock and um, I tacked it down very... Um, temporarily to my panel here, but I put um, double-sided adhesive to more permanently affix it to my card base. And now I'll put my shaker panel over top of that with um, with more adhesive and give it a more permanent um, uh, adhes adhesion, which I'll also use some liquid glue uh, for as well. That will give it a really firm stick, but it'll also give me a little bit of wiggle room too, so that as I go to uh, put this down, it'll be, um, if I need to nudge it a little bit, I can. And for me, it's a lot easier to make uh, shaker cards like this where I close off the back with a second layer of acetate because then I can use that and position it as a full unit and I can see where to line everything up. Um, I have much better success with that than um, trying to put my bits onto my card base and then um, putting the shaker panel on top of that. So similar to the first card, I've got my sentiment panel here and I'm just going to die cut the sentiment itself and get this layered on. And I, um, I think if you wanted, you could, um, sort of snip into this design too, if you wanted to, um, have the darker color show through. So I think it's well worth playing with these, um, these decorative panels a little bit just to see different ways that you can combine them and alter them to get different looks as well. But I love um, how they have built in that shadow layer to, um, to the back of this. And like I said, you could die cut it a, a separate time and snip into it just to get a different uh, colored shadow layer if you wanted. So lots of different ways that you can mix and match and combine to create different looks if you want. And so I'll go ahead and position this. Now, because the decorative panel on the bottom doesn't fully extend up to the top, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to position this sentiment panel a little bit closer to the top just so that um, it makes it not look so obvious that the bottom portion isn't doesn't go fully up to the top. And so I think that that has, um, especially once I start to put some flowers around it, I think it'll look a little bit more natural, even though it is a little bit 
top heavy in terms of um, where all the color and the decorative elements are. But I'll do my best to balance that out and you'll see that in a moment here. This die set does come with some dies that will um, let you die cut out some flowers. So there's one die that cuts out the stem and the stems have leaves, has little buds, and they're pretty on their own, but they are a really nice base for um, adding your flower petals. And there are two separate dies that cut out two different floral patterns. There's, um, and I'll, I'll only be using one, but you can see the one that I don't use on the camera there. And um, these have multiple layers that you can stack. So this particular flower has three layers that you can stack together and create these really sweet little, um, I don't even know what kind of flower it is, but they're really, they're really um, cute and, and pretty dainty. And so I'll just try to arrange these so that they sort of um, frame the sentiment um, panel here and I've um, created my flowers in multiple combinations so since one die plate cuts all three layers out for your flowers I was able to sort of just mix and match between the different shades of purple that I'm using and I've got some um, mirror card stock that is in sort of a purpley pink color which is the same um, card stock that I used for the sentiment. And I, I like that it has that little um, hint of pink because when you tilt the um, shaker bits around, it catches a little bit of that pink um, also. And this is where, because it's so top heavy with all of the design elements up at the top, I decided to add one additional flower stem um, to this corner here just to bring some of the design elements, some of that darker color down to the bottom of the card and hopefully balance that out a little bit better. Okay, so here's a final look at the two cards that I made. This one is really clean and simple, um, lots of mats and layers. This is a fun little shaker card with um, lots of the floral elements that you can uh, make using this die set. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I post them, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell. Thanks so much, and until next time, happy crafting, and have a fantastic day. Bye!